Alright guys, due to K chapter 249 leaks came early, so this video and my same schedule will also be better. Uh, just to warn those who haven't either caught up to the manga or don't want to be spoiled on current events, to so click away from this video and wait for it to be officially released and animated. Alright, so the chapter starts off with a flashback to Yuta killing Kenjaku. We see Yuta over Kenny's head, and he makes a shocked face when Kenny's body twitches. Yuta yells at Rika to come, and he says it was expected that after Kenjaku was killed or either out of commission, the curse manipulation would go out of control. We see curses spurting out of Kenjaku's body and the surroundings. The second page begins with a swarm of cursed spirits heading towards Yuta, and it begins to slice them down. The third page continues with a bombardment of cursed spirits heading towards Yuta, but it pans out to a uh, bridge, and they come up, and Riku is already waiting for the cursed spirits, and she begins to smash one of their heads in. The fourth page starts with Kenjaku's head floating in the sky, kind of like comedically in a way, and he asks Kogane to add a rule, let Fushiguro Megami hold permission to execute the extreme merge between Tengen and humans. And says approved, rule 15, Fushiguro Megami holds the permission to execute the extreme merge between Tengen and humans. Page 16 starts with Kenjaku telling Yuta that he shouldn't be surprised if he had an insurance like this, and that he already finished the ritual of inheritance to Sukuna, then stating that if he could overwrite the parent for the merge ritual by using the colon games as a foundation, but is cut off by Yuta asking and yelling like Tenkin-sama, like asking like THE Tenkin, because he doesn't know that they already went for the plant already absorbed Tenkin. Uh, zooming into Tenkin's fetus, which is something I never thought I'd say, but um... You know, here we are in 2024, um, Lobotomy Kaisen. You know, anything's possible these days. Jogo returns. Gojo returns, he's back. Y anything, pretty much. Um, page 7 then pans to Kenjaku saying how he wouldn't say he enjoyed living all a thousand years, but he was glad the last person he could play with was, um, uh, Takaba. And it kind of shows him in the bottom panel. And then that, um, that the following page is that Yuta is next for Sukuna, basically saying... Um, he's happy he was here, he's last he could play for the last toy which Takaba, and that next up is Yuta. Um, starting with the page, um, ooh, eight, and Kenjaku's last words of, I'm sure it's fun, which is, of course he'd say that, he's fucking dead, he doesn't have to worry about the fusion Tengen or fucking, uh, Mad Sukuna, possibly. Um, snapping back to the present though, of a three-way face-off of Yuta and Rika versus Sukuna. Um, though Yuta is, like, visibly saddened on this panel of him, like, staring off, like, he looks pretty out of it, in a way. Like, he's distraught, which I guess is kind of, kind of fair, in a way. But, um, to give him the benefit of the doubt, it, he did see some shit. Um, which is further shown on the next page by him openly admitting that he could have saved Higuruma if he was there. And that Sukuna's reverse curse technique output is getting back to normal, so it's only a matter of time until they can use his domain again. Yuta continues to question if he could have changed the outcome of the battle if he was a part of the Executioner's Sword plan, asking, wasn't the ambush for Kenjaku sufficient with Maki? And saying, no, Riku is mandatory to stop the damage dealt by curse pure manipulation, assuming that when it's out of control, the maximum scale is as much as when he released the curse in Shubia. Which is also interesting to say, since it would kind of make... Um, this Yuta capable of, like, soloing the Night Parade of 100 Demons? Which, it, it makes sense, since this is an older, like, stronger, more experienced Yuta, but it's still kind of crazy to think about. Uh, going back to page 10, it opens with Yuta slashing at Sukuna, but he grabs the katana, and it was said that he wasn't, like, truly holding it, but rather using many smaller slashes to grab the blades, kind of like a chainsaw, so it's kind of just hovering over his palm. So the interaction with the techniques don't, um, physically touch him. Which is something I'd expect from Gege, honestly, to say and write in for Sukuna, like, you know, I forgot about this one technique that Sukuna had where he nullified your technique, but he didn't use it since the hand era. It's just some shit he would do for him, just cause. Uh, regardless, though, Yuta then lets go of his katana, and with that momentum, Sukuna kind of goes back, and Rika is already behind him. In page 11, though, it's shown that Sukuna was able to punch Rika away a little bit, and but Yuta lands a pretty strong punch um, to his gut. Which causes like his stomach mouth to like clench in and cinch. And um, Yuta goes in for another slash, but it's dodged. And then the next page starts with Sukuna's main ability, random shit go, as he throws a random ass tile towards Yuta, but he dodges it. Same shit he did with um, Gojo throwing a fucking fire hydrant. Rika then punches Sukuna towards Yuta, and he slashes, but it's deflected by Sukuna's hand. 
entering the page with you just saying, and um, yeah, basically saying it's all an excuse, which is referring back to his previous statements about Higuruma's death. Um, page 13 continues with Yuta saying, I wanted to finish Kenjaku with my own hands. I was the one that caused this situation. It's all my fault. So, domain expansion. Showing a shocked Sukuna and Yuta engaging his ring to prepare for his domain for the first time on screen, activating it since it was technically canceled back in the Colon games. Um, page 14 and 15 is the awesome like double spread of Yuta's domain called Authenticity Mutual Love. And it looks kind of like, like a Shinto style shrine with like a bunch of like threaded ropes and stuff hanging around. And um, seeming like infinite katana. So if, if you know what I'm talking about, it's similar to like the Unlimited Blade Works from um, Fate's Day Night. It, it's similar to that, like um, I think it's, his name was Shino or Shinto. But um, it, it's, it's like that pretty much. So you can... If you know what I'm talking about, you, you have an idea of what it kind of looks like. Um, but Sukuna activates um, Hollow Wicker Basket, which is like a stronger, um, simple domain, to uh, try and counteract the sure hit effect of Yuta's domain, but as he's doing so, Yuta rushes in while grabbing a katana. Page 17 shows that the katana lands and it's containing the curse technique Thin Ice Breaker, which is, you know, Uro's technique, which bends space and sends the projectiles. It seems to be that each of the katanas contain the curse technique and they are all sure hit effects so each katana you see on page contains a sure hit effect and a curse technique page 18 begins with yuta stating that in this domain he's going to finish everything sukuna then of course begins to analyze the present battle and comes to the conclusion that this is a plan that they got from megami's memories sukuna knows that yuta has a curse technique that can copy others curse techniques and for him to counter the Sherhit curse technique that's applied to his domain, which was probably the Angel's curse technique, he made him use Hollow Wicker Basket to stop half of his arm and mouth from attacking with the unlimited um, curse technique copies, which most likely, as it was only activated inside the domain after that, but of course it's cut off. I'd like to assume it means that the techniques would only show up inside of the domain once they were either one copied and two maybe even used in battle of sorts, or so used at least once. But we're gonna have to wait and see for that. Um, the chapter ends with page 19 and Sukuna says, From the bread's hits, he's going to pull off me and Megami's body. He says, good for you. You gotta roll. The new and the old main character. Two will go to defeat. Um, from his response, I'm assuming he's talking about the initial blow he took from Yuji before the trial took place with Higuruma, where he felt vibrations through his body. Which, that could mean that Yuji could be using the soul top ability he showed during the Kusakabe training in the flashback. So it's possible still to separate Megami and Tsukuna's souls, and possibly even bodies. But technically they're in the same body right now, because by the Koen game's logic, um, Tsukuna, even though he's in um, Megami's body, um, they're connected by that mindset alone. So even though it's a different soul, it's the same body currently, so I don't know how that's going to work out, but... um. His last remarks, at least, are kind of like jabs, but at least he acknowledges the fact that Yuji has some role in the fight, um, besides being a punching bag. Uh, though he does end the chapter by basically saying he's getting a two-for-one main combo character meal, basically. Two-for-one deal. So, we'll have to see what happens in the next chapter. I'm assuming some more big reveals will come, because based on the editor's notes, he probably was baiting us and trolling us with like the comment he did, where it's like, you won't expect what happens. So... You never know. Next chapter could be crazy, even crazier than this shit, but you never know. It's gay gay. Like, you use curse technique conditions and uses and maybe even like a domain of beauty, something like that. It is pretty up in the air with what we could expect, but I do see us um, panning back to the Akari vs. Urume fight soon. Like, the dude's been at it for like several chapters now, so I'm starting to think gay gay is just pushing off the reveal that Akari was cooked and it's just gonna do like another death shock for us for shits and giggles. Um, but with all that note, I'm, I'm just going to end the video here. Um, this chapter is pretty good. I was expecting something along the spell, but this is like basically better than I expected. And um, I, I look forward to seeing what Gage cooks for us next. The Yuta agenda, um, it, it lives on. The UG one grows uh, stronger with each chapter, honestly. But uh, let's just hope that Yuta lasts at least three chapters, so we can definitely put him over everyone in the verse besides Gojo. Because at least like he hurt Tsukuna. Meanwhile, like, Kashimo, like, never even touched him. He, he just got no diffed. But, um, anyway. 
I uh, hope you enjoyed, and if you stick around till the end of the video, um, why don't you consider hitting the subscribe button as it's free, and it will show you interested in more content like this in the future. But on that note, hope you had a good day, and as always, bye guys.